Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family. We chose this one. This episode 198, the world's fastest Indian, 2005. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too. And this episode is brought to you by Jacobs Digital. They are a na- nationwide specialty online retailer as well as a brick and mortar retail store operating in the same Auckland location for 35 years. Shout out to jacobsdigital.co.nz. Well, shout out to Jacobs, ooh, down under, yeah. a Kiwi company too. After the break, we will be talking about the movie The World's Fastest Indian that Haley Gerbys, our lovely, wonderful Haley, picked for us on Patreon. I do want to say, because I posted it on Twitter today, as we normally do like the week before. I'm like, hey, next week, this is the movie we're doing in case we want to watch long or whatever. Yeah. The title makes it seem like maybe it's like a dude, right? Like it's just like the world's fastest Indian, like Native American or actual Indian or whatever. He finds a person who just like is mm-hmm. sprinting and he's the world's fastest yes. Indian. Yes. And it's not that. It's the it's bike. Not. But there's also the idea that like Anthony Hopkins, a British man, <laughs> is playing a real world New Zealander and not even giving a shit about the accent. So like there's weird <laughs> stuff going on and here. And the movie knows it too. That's yeah. the best. One. Okay. Yeah. And I have some trivia about that too. But like it just – so the world's fastest Indian is a motorcycle, but it's also a British guy pretending he's a Kiwi. So It would know. be better – if if Anthony Hopkins was the world's fastest Indian and he just like has no anything, but he just plays like a Native American that's a sprinter at the age that he is. Yeah. <laughs> I also just you know I I, I I I don't know how to respond to that. I also while I was uh, listening to that, I just found on Twitter we're gonna watch during the on the streets. Fast Family tweeted a deleted scene from F nine. So. Uh, we will have to watch this later this episode because I'm excited to see what this is about. But Joe, extracurricular activities before we get there. What have you been up to since we last spoke? I have some kind of cool things. Um, I just got back Monday night late from Georgia. We went to go visit Rachel's cousin, like the cousin that she sees the most, had a baby recently. It's only like two or three months old, and they live in Atlanta so we all met up in Georgia. We went to Tybee Island, though, which is, like, a little bit outside of Savannah. Cool. And they, like, rented this cool house there, and it's, like, near the beach. And, you know, it's just, like, islandy type, southern islandy place. Her, aunt, like, their parents, her cousin's parents met us there. Rachel's parents met us there. And we just had, like, a cute little family fun time weekend it was really, really enjoyable. So Rachel and I got drunk by the pool. We got to see the new baby. We got to see everybody and like spend some time with people that we haven't seen in a long time. Cause usually that's like the Christmas crew for them, right? Like that's like who meets up sure. for Christmas in their family. So they haven't seen each other for two Christmases, right? Or well, one Christmas. But almost two years. Yeah. But yeah, one Christmas but almost two years. So it was cool to, you know, go see everyone. We watched, which I kind of mentioned to you, and I'm just bringing it up because I want to hear your side of this. We watched White Lotus, and we oh, right. really you enjoyed it. it. We finished. Really? Yeah, we really enjoyed okay. it, and I want to know why, because the background is that I told Joey that we started White Lotus, and he was like, you don't need to watch that. Well, what did you really like about it? As someone who's spent time in Hawaii, in resorts, I like the satire of rich white people at resorts in Hawaii. And I found it very, very comical. What did you not like about it? Well, I don't think it's funny. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't think okay. it was... Because they're all unlikable assholes. They're insufferable. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I don't. I didn't find that funny. So it's about eight different people. And, like, there's a family with a friend and then a couple on a honeymoon and then a woman all going to this resort, the White Lotus, in Hawaii yes. for, like, a week or whatever, or two weeks or whatever. And yeah. things across the board go wrong. For everyone. Yeah. Separately. In every way. Yeah. And so Mike White, who wrote and directed this show, wrote and directed a series called Enlightened a decade ago, starring Laura Dern, the daughter of Diane Ladd, the woman in this movie that we're talking about today. Ooh. But that show was incredible. He also wrote and directed School of Rock, which people love, yeah. um, which I like too. But Enlightened was so good. I'm like, I'm going to watch anything this guy has to do. It felt predictable and then also unpredictable in ways that like I didn't care about. 
I don't think any of the endings were satisfying, which he kind of, like, that was kind of the point. Like, I read an interview that he did with on Vulture, and I'm not going to spoil it in case people want to watch it. Even after reading the interview, I'm like, I see what you're trying to do. I don't like it anymore. Um, okay. I mean, not, not more. I, mean, I don't like it more than I did already. Like, I already didn't like it, and I still don't really like it. Yeah, I just didn't think it was funny. I didn't think the drama, I didn't think, like, the twists in it were very... It just didn't do anything for me. I wasn't, like, the twists... Okay, whatever. Like, it was just fun. It just was carrying the show. Because here, here's the thing. So the first, the twist, the main twist is that on the first scene, it's like, it takes place at the end of the season, which is another thing that I fucking hate. And I know you, you see hate a that. I casket hate that. being rolled off an airplane. And you're Bond like, oh my God, yeah. which of these people, or whatever, which of these people died? And like the whole show, and then it flashes back to them arriving and whatever. And then you find out who died. It's just like, I don't give a shit. Like, who cares? I don't, I don't care. And it's just, it's, it's unsatisfying in that way. I also think, I don't think it's bad. I just think it's six hours of just like, yeah, fine, whatever. Which I think is the worst kind of, like, if it was bad, I could have turned it off. But I'm just like, it feels like it could turn a corner yeah. and it just never does. Okay, that's fair. I really enjoyed it because the people are insufferable. And I found comedy in that. Rachel and I love Hawaii. Like, we've been there a couple times now. It's a place that we would go back to. And just seeing that kind of thing. Just the general, like, faux progressiveness of well, people's that was, so, and that's cracks me thing. up. That's what the show, like, that was the point of the show. Yeah, like, exactly. When they asked Mike White about it, they're like, well, he's like, I don't want to, like, the imperialism, like, it's 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 hard to justify going to a place and enjoying yourself when, like, you realize that we stole people's land. And just like, yeah. well, if that's the point of the show, maybe you don't sell it as, like, a, a satire of rich, I mean, I guess that's kind of, I don't know, it just. Both, yeah. I think those are kind of intertwined, right? Like, it wasn't fun, and it wasn't something that I was just like, oh my god, I didn't know that. Like, <laughs> yeah, rich people suck, and we stole land from indigenous people. Like, of course, I knew that. Like, it's not news, no, and it's, it's not a not. fun show. I love Connie Britton from Friday Night Lights. I like Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria. I like Alexander Daddario from True Detective and stuff. And, like, I like Steve Zahn to a certain extent, whatever. Like, I like actors on the show. I like Jennifer Coolidge from the Christopher Guest movies. Of course, yeah. I don't like nothing. Nobody, nobody was doing anything here that I was just like, oh my god, like this. So again, like, I don't think it's bad. I just would not recommend it. If you do want to see it, it's on HBO Max. It's six episodes. It for the last thought on it, I wish you could have watched it with my brain because Rachel and I just found it very silly and enjoyable. I just think there's so much stuff out there that this is so unremarkable to an extent that like it's not so bad. It's good. like it's it's this is. To use your scale, your Rotten Tomatoes, 90 or above or 20 or below or whatever. Yeah, this like, is, fifth, this, this is, is set, I would say 65, 70. Yeah, which is terrible. <laughs> that's the wrong place to be. No, okay. I've Again, don't think it's bad. It's just boring. But what else? Anything else of note or no? That would, oh, and then we watched Spy Racers. No, so watch Spy Racers. I watched sports while I was at, in Georgia, but that's about it. That's my main things. I've not watched a ton of things. I, I I've been rewatching David Lynch movies. I rewatched uh, Blue Velvet on Sunday, which is better Ooh. than I remembered it being. Like it's cool. really really good. And then on Friday, Bob came over for a How to Win the Lottery, and we did this. You know, we did the longest book in the season. This book called Ducks Newberry Port, I, which I talked about in here, is like the whole book is one thousand sentence. pages. Yep. Th yep. one sentence. Woman's mm -hmm. dream. We, fever we talked dream about or that. Something. Yeah. And yep. in there, she talks about Harrison Ford movies a lot. So we watched The Fugitive and did a bonus episode on The Fugitive. Uh, so we did that. That was on Friday. I don't think I've done much because my cat's been kind of sick and just, you know, I was worried for her. So I didn't really go anywhere or do anything. So I wanted to make sure that she was Good like cat. fine. But yeah, old ass 17 and a half year old cat. Just, What's you your know. cat's name again? Sam. Named after Sam, Sam and Max. Freelance police. Yes. I think I've seen Joey's cat maybe once of all the times I've been at Joey's house. Well, you don't come here often, and I'm not saying that as like a criticism. It's just that when you come here, it's like outdoor barbecue stuff. I yes. spend more nights at your house by far, and like we hang for out true. inside at your true. house more. So, true. but yeah, she's also kind of a scaredy cat. Even though, like, if you guys were here for a while, you know, she would come down after like a half an hour. Like hour here, or yeah, exactly. I get it. But, Pierre yeah. hides from everyone for two days, and then he comes down and is like, mm -hmm. "Okay, you're not leaving yet." But I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've been doing. I've been watching on Netflix brand new Cherry Flavor, which is a horror series. Starring Rosa Salazar and Catherine Keener, which is good. Um, I'm hoping it gets weirder or grosser, but you know, we'll say I have two or three episodes left, I think. Speaking of Netflix, we watched Mouse at the Palace. It was another documentary. You know, thank you for pointing it out to me. 
I didn't talk about this last time, right? Uh, we I think we mentioned it, but you didn't talk about seeing it. Okay, yeah, you mentioned it. Um, it was another one of these sports documentaries where, like, Rachel was like, I don't care about sports documentaries. Right. These don't matter. By the end of it, she was like, oh, my God, I can't believe what happened. This is such a interesting, terrible story. You know what I mean? Like, in the grand scheme of things story. Um, so she got super sucked in, and we really enjoyed Mouse at the Palace. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, the other big one this season is either next week, which is this week as this episode comes out, or the week, the following week, which would be the final week. I don't remember which one it is, but there's, like, some, I want to say, like, Russian hockey team owned by the mob or something like there's some kind of weird crazy story like that so keep your eye out for like the third episode that came out yesterday i think was about caitlin jenner oh interesting okay cool. but episode four or five is the other one that sounds really interesting about this russian hockey i think something something like hockey team mob something or other so that sounds fun too yeah cool in terms of sports documentaries the new i have not seen any of them yet because they put them out like two or every two or three days i'm just gonna wait till all five or six whatever it is gonna be are out but the guy who did or the two guys who did the history of Seattle Mariners, which I talked about last year, yes, are yes. doing the history of the Atlanta Falcons on YouTube, and there's three episodes of that out now. By the time this comes out, there will be at least four, if not five. And it's either going to be five or six, but you know, the Falcons kind of like an inept franchise that was almost great a few times, almost won the Super Bowl a few times. Yeah. Did, they, did they in 2000? With Jamal Anderson, the Dirty Bird, or they lose to the Ravens? Did they play the Ravens? I think the Ravens might have won that one. I'm not going to spoil it for myself. I'm going to see... Okay. What happens here? I don't think the Falcons won, but they Falcons also had Brett Favre at one point. Yes, they did, which I'm sure will come up. And also, they were up 20 to three at halftime over the Patriots, oh, and they God, blew that game. God, I don't want right? to think about so, that ever again. I think that's all. I think that's everything I got. Again, I haven't not been doing much, but Bob's coming over again this weekend for another lottery pod. We'll see what else goes on. But we have a Patreon page: too fast, too far. Com. Shout out to Cassie Wilson, Jake Freer, Ben Millam, and Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleiman, Brian Rodriguez of. High School Slumber Party, The Woman of the Hour, Haley Gerbys, West Hampton, Christian Larson, Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden, Renato DiDonato, Michael McGann, and Jessica Collins, a.k.a. Montez. Montez. Thank you all so much for supporting at the $5 a month level or above. Yeah, thank if you. If you want access to bonus episodes, early access to every episode. So next week, I think next week we're recording a bonus episode. It's another bonus episode coming out soon. We do the monthly bonus episodes. Voting for pit stops and stuff like that, which we haven't done. Maybe we'll do next lap. Who knows? But the access to the Fast and Furious Minute Quiz, the Minute Document, all that sort of stuff. Too fast, too far.com. Even a dollar a month gets you in the door. We also have an email address, family at cageclub.me. And we have two emails, I want to okay. say. We, we got one. So this I'm not going to read this one, but we got one to another email, too, that I sent to you and either you and Brian or you and Mike. That like there's this new tactic that PR people are doing where they're emailing a podcast and they're like, hey, we love your show. Or not even, no, I'm sorry. We, they don't say that. I'm reaching out on behalf of my client. He's in this new thing. We would love him to be on your podcast. And it's like, well, that's not really what we do. Um, but we got one for this show, but sent to my Cage Club email. So like they can't even get that right. Jackie Song, his film Incognito, his, his uh, publicist wants him to be on the show. Is, is it a Fast and the Furious movie at all? Incognito tells the story of Isabel and her claim that she has teleported from the past. Authorities are convinced that the young woman is delusional and admit her to a mental asylum. The shocking truth of Isabel's mysterious past starts to unfold when her doctor begins to investigate her wild time-traveling claims. The genre-bending film is inspired by true events and explores the moral differences of two conflicting eras. Don't see a thing about cars. Well, he missed the memory lap. Are you sorry? You're a little too late. Sorry, sorry, bro. Sorry, Luca Marino, and sorry to Jackie Song, but maybe next time. We also got a YouTube comment from Edward Skaggs on our Two Lane Blacktop. By the way, the Two Lane Blacktop YouTube <laughs> is a hotbed of boomer activity. I can tell you that much. <laughs> and I don't know if he's correcting us, probably. I don't know if he's correcting what he's correcting, but Edward Skaggs just says that's not a Bel Air, it's a 210. Cool. Well, thanks, Ed. I, I thought it was a Bel Air in the movie, though, because don't they talk about it being a Bel Air? I think so. And is it on IMDb as a Bel Air? Like it's not like um it's not like I'm like, oh yeah, that's a Bel Air. I don't know what Bel Air is. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. And his picture, he is an old man, so you know, tracks. Is it is it just chin up? No, it's a it's a nice actual full headshot. So Ed's got that going for him. There you go. Good job, Ed. You're doing the Lord's work over there. And our one actual email today is from Justin Kleiman, subject line, I'm way behind. We know because you've been fucking partying in Ibiza for the past two weeks. Well, not really, he but... talks about that. He says, I just got back from vacation. I'm working on getting caught up. I finished Mad Max Fury Road, which feels so long ago. 
I don't remember how long ago that was. It it feels a couple weeks. That was like three weeks ago. Fury Road, we published it on August 3rd, which means we watched it more than a month ago, or about a month okay. ago. Okay, yeah, about a month. Four but it was ago. one, two, three, four, five episodes ago. Yeah, that's a while. So he's not that far, you know, whatever. Spain was as beautiful as I remembered it. I'm very excited to go for you to go to Barcelona, Joey. It's a beautiful city. Yes, I'm hoping it to go next summer for yeah. Primavera. We rented a shitty Citroen car when we were there for the budget rental. We somehow got the insane price of 320 euros for two weeks. God damn, that's like... It's a, it's a decent price, dude, yeah. That's like 20 euros a day. That's yeah, good. Really, Especially because right now, everything is crazy. They're like, oh, you want to rent a You want to go anywhere, do anything? Yeah. Yep, Check these prices up. It was super fun to get a, to drive a stick for the first time in five or six years, although it was a six-speed, so that took some getting used to. The downside was when we dropped the car off, budget magically doubled the price to 620 Ugh. euros. We had to spend a while arguing with different managers till they got the price down to what we were told when we picked it up. Well, I'm glad you did not get screwed there. I'm glad, yeah. Yeah, fight for your rights, man. That was good. Good call. The green bottled beer from 4F4F that Wells mentioned is a Presidente. It's the mm -hmm. beer of the Dominican Republic. I have a Dominican friend who goes in with a few other Dominicans every year to order a pallet of it to the U.S. They split, then they split it up between them. Wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. It says, funny you would bring up Turkish coffee. I just went to my local Middle Eastern grocer and bought some yesterday. As Joe said, I love all ways to make coffee. He does. He really does. The last thing I was going to mention was about Roman and the Demo Derby. He says, you searched upstate Florida prisons, which by the way, we have an answer today. Maybe okay. I thought it wrong all these years, but I assume Brian and Bilkins went to California to get him. Well, Justin, in the episodes you're going to catch up, you're going to hear people not yell at us, but tell us that we're wrong. Barstow's in the California desert. It looks like the desert at the Derby track. There really isn't any reason for Roman to already be in Florida. And when he gets to Miami, it's clear he's never been there before. In the minutes, in this episode, we'll talk about that. Because yes. we have answers. Thank you, Justin, for a great email. I'm glad you're back. Glad you're safe. Glad everybody's okay. You guys look like you had a blast, and I'm very jealous. That's all the emails for today. If you want to email uh, wait, us. I got one more. I got one more thing. Somebody mentioned on us on Twitter. I'm going to do that in the on the streets. Oh, we got to okay. do that now. I have that open. But yeah, that's actually now is a better time. So we have Reaction Rocket. Yes. Who is someone that you found in the BD Wappy game. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. That's cool. Because his he's the one who's the bio is I only love Sprite in the Fast and Furious movies. Oh, yeah. That I remember. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Reaction Rocket said, do you think we'll see any high profile casting for F10 or F11? Or do you think we're just going to ride it out with who we have? They love to add a big name each movie. But this cast is already huge, and I want to see our main crew have plenty of time to shine. And you said that's a good question. I think we're going to address it in the intro of the next episode we record. So, and also Mike Manzi said, still holding up for Keanu as Dom's great-great-grandson from the future, which is... Yes. So cool. I yeah. think generally we cannot have a new Fast and the Furious without adding someone big. I just think that at this point they're going to keep adding people, because if they can, why not? Now, I don't think that's either good nor bad, because they added John Cena. I th I was skeptical, but when we went in, I don't think John Cena did a bad job. I don't think he, like, really took a lot of time away from anyone else in the movie. It felt like a nice addition. Um, I could definitely see them adding people, but I also think this leads into my theory that, like, we have to kill off someone big soon. Sure. If we're going to do 10 and 11, like, somebody got to go. And I think that it will also kind of fill that void in that situation, too. So I'm imagining that, yes, they do add one or two no another major actors. Somebody that we might not be thinking of. Somebody that we might have mentioned. Keanu is a good guess. Um, Harrison Ford would be fun. We've, we've thrown out a ton of different options there. I think they will do it. But I think that it's going to be because... In 10, somebody got to go. Like, in 10 or 11, like, even the beginning of 11, but I think, like, the end of 10 has to end with someone dying. Pro possibly? Probably? There has to be some kind of cliffhanger, I think. Yeah. I would not be surprised if no one knew is added in 11, if we're calling it 11 or 10-2 or whatever. Okay, But yes. I think that there will be somebody in 10-1, whether that's Dom's dad back from the dead, Dom's mom, Brian's parents, Giselle back from the dead, Whoever the main big bad is, I don't know, you know, yeah. all sorts of possibilities here. Yep. I just tweeted this that Britney Spears put on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw it. I really Not like only has this cute asshole been with me through the hardest years of my life, but he also happens to be an extremely good cook. Fast and Furious franchise don't miss out on your next star. So I don't know if she's Why? pitching How do those Sam Asghari. 
I don't know. Maybe he, again, we were talking about in the Spy Racers episode, food is a big factor. I don't know. I don't know either. And like, is she, is she auditioning him for like a celebrity chef role for the movies or what? And like, for all of the things to settle on, for her to settle on Fast and Furious, like, she has to be a fan then. Or he has to be a fan. One of them. Well, so Sam Asghari is an American actor that's up and coming in the TV film industry. He's born in Iran, migrated to the U.S. in 2006. He's in Black Monday for three episodes, the TV show Hacks, which is apparently pretty good. He was in the Britney Spears music video for Slumber Party, which I guess maybe is that, that's where they met. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know who this guy is, where he came from. If he's involved, if it's just a dream casting, he's a good looking dude. He would fit in, right? So is, are I don't they know. dating or is he like her chef? Britney Spears' boyfriend, Sam Asghari, has okay, daddy so, issues yeah, of his so own with his Daily Mail. Because I didn't know if she was like, this is like my super friendly chef that has like been, like, you know what I mean? Kind of like a no, personal yeah, assistant, no. kind of a chef. I mean, this dude, like, look, click on that picture. He's dude super is fucking, gorgeous, man. He's I ripped, s- yeah. Yeah, he's fucking beautiful. I mean, Sam I Sam Asghari. Oh, this is just Britney making a quick pitch to the producers. He wants to be a part of 10. Okay, so he's just he just wants to be in the movie, which I mean, of course, who wouldn't want to be, right? So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Same, Britney. We we want to be in Fast 10 too. Yeah, we just haven't been with you for the toughest years of your life, but you know. I- I'm a pretty good cook, I mean, but that's all I got going for me. I don't look like him either, so. Again, that's all the emails for today. If you want to email in family at cageclub.me or hit us up on Twitter or Facebook or wherever, and we will go from there. I do want to say, so I, I mentioned before, there is a 57, 57 second long clip on Twitter. Yes. Have a look at the deleted scene from F9 and see more bonus content, including the extended director's cut release on digital 9.7 and on 4K Blu-ray 9.21. You no, know, I would love to see my nephew just a little bit more often than, say, world-ending emergencies and holidays once in a while, maybe? <laughs> And how's the buster? He's good. He's really good. You know, uh, now that I'm a father, I can't stop thinking about our dad. And, uh, what life would have been like if he was alive. We'd be very different people, don't you think? Um, what's happened? Something I hope I'm wrong about. So this is a very nice scene, I think. I, I, I like Dom and me together. I don't know when, I guess this is early when Before, she's yes, very picking early. baby Brian up to bring him to Brian the babysitter? I think so, because they're still at like the farm, you know? So that's a good context clue to tell us where they are. It's got to be either, like, the. it can only be either the very beginning or the very end, right? Like... It has to be the very beginning. It has to be the very beginning, but also if this happens and she's coming to see him, it might take away the mini like feeling of like when Dom pulls up to the plane, right? Oh, okay. Get but, what I'm saying? So there is that scene later that we've made fun of a little bit that somebody made fun of. I don't remember who it was. We talked about F9 four times and also like talked about it with like everybody else, but there's that scene with the like you know, they're with the most important, like, the best person possible, Brian. And then Dom in the movie, like, kind of looks confused. But, like, he shouldn't look confused because this scene makes it seem like he knows that he's with Brian. Yeah, also, it it gives you a Mia reveal before Mia walks in, too. So it spoils both of those. Remember? Because it's like, oh, look who we found. And, like, Mia walks down the stairs in the bunker. So, like, if Dom knew that he gave Brian to Mia, it spoils both Dom pulling up to the plane and Mia walking down later. So, I get why they would do that. It's cute. I like that Dom calls Brian the buster again. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, man, I've been really thinking about my dad, but we don't really need that in the movie because there's so many dad flashback scenes. Like, he's obviously right. been thinking about his dad a ton, and it's kind of intuitive, too. So, I can see why this one was cut. Like, I wish he was saying, like, why he was thinking about his dad. And obviously, they'd be, like, very, very different people if their dad was still around. Probably not international criminals. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a strange scene. Like, it's a nice scene, but I don't know where in the movie it would go. Like you're saying, we don't need this stuff. It sort of spoils reveals. It makes me more question, like, why they shot it more than anything else. You but know? also makes you wonder, okay, so remember, like, I joked the first time, like... 
I can't believe that they made Mia find this like abandoned station in the middle of nowhere, like on her own, just like, oh yeah, Mia found the place, right? Yeah. But this also means that Mia flew from wherever she and Brian are living, then drove to the middle of nowhere to pick up baby Brian. Yep. And then drove all the way back, got back to adult Brian. Yep. And then dropped then, the kids off. Yeah. And then went to the middle of nowhere. So it's like there's an extra leg. It's just like, <laughs> hey, just like let her take the plane with you guys, right? So you know what you know what movie I want to see is the is the transporter movie where Mia is delivering baby Brian to Brian. Yeah, but Statham is the transporter. Maybe like yeah, but maybe like it's her escort or something. That's a joke because he's in the movie The Transporter. I know, I got that. And joke also, too. he transported baby Brian in eight. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. We don't know where me and Brian are living. We don't know where the babies are hanging out. We know that Brian was able to drive up to 1327 in his car, right? So maybe in America somewhere. We don't know where this location is that Dom and Levy are living. We, well, that's unnamed, unmarked location, so. Oh, I was going to say, like, oh, maybe they live in, like, the farm down the street because that would kind of track. But then at the same time, she's like, oh, it's great seeing you. I wish I could like, see the, the kid yeah. more often, yeah. Also, like, if she lived down the street, she would just hop the plane with Dom. Well, maybe she, like, you know, she just, like, she didn't have enough time to, like, go get the baby and board at the same time, you know? Then maybe Dom can drop the goddamn kid off while he picks up me and goes to the airplane. <laughs> you would think so. so. That's a nice scene. Seven minutes. We got six more to go, I guess, when the disc drops in a couple of weeks. But we'll, cut, we'll talk about it here. I need, a, I need a director's edit, a director's overlay of why, what this scene was and why they cut it. Yeah. We'll have to ask Justin Lin. Justin, no, if you're if you're listening, Justin, write in family at cageclub.me. Let us know, please. Yeah. Any other news that you've seen, Joe? Any, any other Fast Diverse news that you've seen in the last week? No. Then let us do the Fast and the Furious a minute, minute 24, a minute I called now leaving Barstow Speedway. I thought you couldn't wander more than 100 yards from your home. Why do you think I'm parked so close to the Derby? Man, quit playing like you're going to pass this up. Hey, bro, what's going on? I don't know if I should be trusting you, man. Just think of it this way. It's, a, it's an opportunity for a fresh start. Now, let's just go do this, all right? I wouldn't need a fresh start if it wasn't for you. So in this minute, Brian and Bilkins convince Roman to participate, or at least tag along to hear more. Roman enters his trailer as we cut to Bilkins, Brian, and Roman driving in Miami. The three of them pull up to a U.S. customs office. As Bilkins and Brian enter the building, Roman hangs back in the parking lot. Brian tries to convince Roman to follow him inside, but Roman has hesitations. And we see, maybe for the first time, maybe the first time we noticed, that the sign outside the Derby says Barstow Speedway. They are in Barstow. Yeah, I think I had that earlier, though. Was there one that said... Oh, it was a 19 mi minute 19. So yeah. why do we not think it was for sure Barstow? I don't know. We just probably didn't talk about it. But yeah, so now we know, now leaving Barstow Speedway. They were in Barstow for sure. So they were in California. Yeah. The other thing in this minute, I mean, Roman mutters something under his breath like he wants to curse out Brian, but knows this is a good opportunity. But Roman rubs his ankle like, uh, I can't believe that I'm actually doing this maybe, or that I'm actually free, or that I don't have this tracker on, because who knows how long, right? Because he did three years. Who knows, right? But like, yeah. just like, it's again, show don't tell in a way, but it's also like, it's just, it's a little over the top, but also, you know, I appreciate it. So we get a lot of show don't tell in this one, which I kind of like. Like, breaking it down minute by minute, like, I didn't realize it. And now that you've been saying it, we've seen, like, a lot of times that... Wait, didn't we, like, we, didn't we praise a show, don't tell? And then, like, immediately in the next minute, they were like, oh, that's because the thing. Yeah, well, it was, uh, once again <laughs> about his ankle bracelet, it was just like, uh, he, he you see it, and you're like, oh, he's 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 a bad man or whatever. And they're like, yeah, he's on house arrest, blah, 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 blah. It's just like, yeah, okay, we get it. <laughs> and also, like, at the beginning of this video, he's like, why do you think I parked so close to the thing or whatever? Like, right. <laughs> so sorry so as many times as we were like yeah you could have just said that i forgot that in the dialogue there's like four or five times no yeah it, under, it. it undersells itself it undercuts itself who oh boy uh, i do want to say that the the outfits they change and i guess when they they fly and then drive 
this is like the two fast looks, right? Like this, this is Brian it, in the yes. West Coast chopper shirt. Yep. This is Roman in the blue cutoff denim shirt that he's going to take off and use as the like guard when he punches through the window. Yeah. Like when I think of what they look like in this movie, I mean, there's a lot of looks or whatever, but like this is what I think. Like this is for Roman and Brian. I guess also for Bilkins in his tan suit. Like this is what I'm what I'm picturing. A hundred percent. That West Coast Choppers t-shirt is classic. He got like what the Converse is on, like gray Dickies shorts like this is and it's like so of the time too what i was surprised by in that regard is roman's jeans for being early 2000s are not that baggy like they're loose fitting but they're not like jenkos you know what i mean which i feel like could have been the case i think that was just a hair before this you know what i mean like i think so we're already we past just, that we're through that already okay yeah we just like got just through that okay so that's what i'm thinking I was looking, I got the cars to pull up in the lot. I couldn't definitively find the bridge. And the main thing that I was looking for was I wanted to find this U.S. Customs office. Okay. So I went through Google Maps and I found U.S. Oh, and it's, the sign says U.S. Customs Service. Okay. Not U.S. Customs and whatever, because there's like, an, like for the official one, right? So like they right. use like a little bit of movie thing. I was like, okay, cool. There's two U.S. Customs buildings. There's, like, one... Two in Miami. In Miami, like, at the port, kind of, like, where they would be, because okay. we see them cross water, right? So there's, like, one, like, like right in, on, like, a little island there, and, like, I don't know, not South Beach, but, like, a little island there, like, on a port, and there's one that's, like, in downtown Miami. So I'm like, okay, it could be either of these. One on Google Maps, it's not either of these. You know, presumably... It is the office that's in downtown Miami is what I was guessing what they were trying to do, but it doesn't really matter because it's a movie. They don't care about it. The other thing was I was like, okay, cool. But in the background, something I noticed was there's this statue in the courtyard. Okay. okay. Like as the car is pulling up behind them, you see the like kind of like back shoulder of a soldier with a helmet on okay. in, in this courtyard. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Maybe I can use that. Identifiable feature, sure. Identifiable feature to try to find out, like, a, I'm like, okay, so, like, Miami soldier statues and, like, things like that. Absolutely nothing. The closest thing I found was, like, a statue that's in, like, an Arizona state house. There is some statues in it in Miami about, like, Bay of Pigs or something, which kind of makes sense, but it doesn't look like this. I can't find a statue in a courtyard with palm trees around it. They're either like nothing or like the Bay of Pigs, which doesn't look like it. Stuff like that. <sighs> My studying was foiled this time. In the parking lot where Johnny Tran and Lance bring Brian and Dom, there is a statue. Who is the statue of? Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was hoping that I could have got it and like yeah, we could have no. talked about the stat. No, but I can't figure out what statue it is. So I'm um, SOL. It might not even be in Miami, but I mean like mostly it probably it is. But probably it probably could... is. I'm gonna look where they filmed this because I don't know if we ever looked up the filming location. I have a whole bunch of movie locations from this movie in like one giant article. A lot of it is downtown Miami. Weston, so, Homestead, Key West, Universal Studios, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, Cape Canaveral, Versailles Restaurant in Miami, Virginia Keys, Seven Mile Bridge, California City, California, mm -hmm. Orlando, Hollywood, Florida, Miami, Florida. Yeah, it could be like near Orlando, like near like Universal or something, right? Like Right. At the Fast and Furious Supercharged Ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Available now. We hear a little bit of a music sting. I don't know if it's the same Roman Pierce. I just put it in the reprise, maybe. I don't know. Anything else, before we get to the trivia question, anything else that you noticed in this minute? Um, no, that was it. Because I'm glad that we're out of the Demolition Derby parking lot, even though it's another, like, 10 seconds there in this minute, or maybe yes, even more. Right. But this is kind of like the transition minute. Once we go inside, there'll be more to look at and yes. see and talk about and everything like that. But uh, the only question, I don't know if you like this question, I don't know if you saw this question or not, but which ankle was Roman's house arrest tracker on his left or his right? And the answer is, it's right. I think it's a pretty good question because now we've seen it in the car and he was using it for the gas pedal. We yep. saw it when he walked out and now we see him rub his right leg, even though it's reversed because we're facing him this time. Yeah, I like I can't think of anything better than that. That's not like nitpicky because nothing really happens here. I mean, we could no. say like what brand is on Brian shirt, but who cares? Like it's, you know. Oh, that's you know what? That's not a bad question. We'll save that. We'll keep that in the back pocket in case there's no question for next minute. Get what I'm saying, though? Like, you could do, like, Coca-Cola, West Coast Choppers. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
I wonder if you get a choice, like, when you are under house arrest, if you get to pick which ankle. Like, you know how, like... Oh, yeah, like, The only so. thing that... Like, the closest thing you have is, like, you wear a watch on your non-dominant wrist. Like, if you're a righty, you wear it on your left wrist generally, so you're not, like, you know... I think, the, I think whatever. you do. I know a lot of people that had ankle bracelets before. You know a lot of people who had them? Yes. I, I would wow. say, considering how many people that had them, like, I've known at least more, like, close to 10. Probably Jesus. more than 10. That's close to 10 or more than 10 than I know. That's what I mean. So so I would consider that a lot, right? Like, I'm not saying, like, 100, yeah. but I'm saying, like, 10 is, like... Well, sometimes you, like, you you say, like, a thing, you're like, oh, I know a lot. I'm like, well, you really? You're like, yeah, like, two. It's just like, well, that's not. But, like, 10's a lot. That's a lot of people to know that, like, did enough serious shit that, like, yeah. they're being monitored. I think that I was there for one of them being put on, and I think you get to pick your ankle, but I'm not sure. I never had one, so I can't tell you from experience, but... Stay tuned as Joe goes out and does a thing that gets him under house arrest. <laughs> Wait, hold, hold on. Let me, like, pause. Let's pause for a second. I'm just gonna go <laughs> drive my car into a into a uh, tree over across the street from my house to see if they put me on house arrest. Well, yeah, I don't even want to know what you have to do to get on house arrest, I suppose. I guess it's probably rehabilitation post-incarceration. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Any other thoughts about Minute 24? Um, no, I'm glad to be out of the Demolition Derby because it lasted way longer than I thought. I mean, realistically, it's four or five minutes, but in this thing, it's a lot. It's a lot of time. Exactly. All right, let's take a break and let us come back and talk about the world's fastest Indian. Number 198, the world's fastest Indian. This episode is brought to you by Jacobs Digital. Whether you're looking for telescopes, metal detectors, spotting scopes, microscopes, binoculars, cameras, or one of their specialty services, their staffs have the knowledge, expertise, and experience to suggest the right product for you. Shout out to Jacobs Digital. Well, shout out to Jacobs and welcome back to the show. So the world's fastest Indian which I watched on, so this is the thing that like is, I don't know if it's easy, I think I think your mileage may vary, but I watched it on like Canopy, which is a library streaming service that not every library participates in. Uh, my library does not, but the one in my parents' town does, and I still have a library card there, so I watched it on there, oh, so cool. it's available to legally stream for free, sort of, depending your if your library does it, but it's there. It is a New Zealand biographical sports drama film based on the Invercargill New Zealand sports Speed bike racer Burt Munro and his highly modified 1920 Indian Scout motorcycle set in 1967. This is a movie I'd never heard of, let alone nope. seen before. Had you heard of this or no? Absolutely not. And it has Anthony Hopkins in it. But very early, like the first title card, I see that it's produced by the New Zealand Film whatever Society or something. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is another one of these movies like... Which one did we do that was like from Canada? Remember this? We had like one of these Canadian movies. I think that I think that was the one that Haley picked for the I think so Rodriguez too. lap. The uh, oh god, what's her, what's the name? Was where Letty was a teacher? Yes, 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 yes. Haley loves these movies that are funded by the state. <laughs> yeah, she. The, that movie was called Milton's Secret. Milton's Secret. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so when I got that, I was I was instantly thinking Milton's Secret. That's what I'm thinking of. Good job, Haley. So I'm watching this. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be some. Uh, New Zealandy propaganda here. And as nope. I'm watching, if anything, it's American propaganda. I think it's Utah propaganda, basically. Right? <laughs> yeah, because like America does not exist like this movie portrays it. It's a very wholesome look at America. Even in the six even in the 60s like it's yeah just i mean like... it's it's set like 55 years ago but yeah and we'll talk about that so just some more background on Please. this guy so he set numerous land speed records for motorcycles with engines less than a thousand cc's at the bonneville salt flats in utah in the 50s and 60s he was 68 when he's when he set the unbeaten world record at least as of like 2016 it was still unbeaten i don't know and anthony hopkins was 68 when he shot this movie so just kind of coincidentally the same age as burtman which i think is a good way to put in the headspace of like just how old this dude was when he, he was, was doing this crazy shit. Yeah, he, he wasn't a young dude. And it's weird that you see Anthony Hopkins. For me, it was weird seeing Anthony Hopkins do this and being like, man, Anthony Hopkins looks really old. And you're like, oh, he's 68. And then he was in The Father last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, so, you know, I, I said in the, in the opening that I watched The Fugitive and just like Tommy Lee Jones, it's from 1991 or whatever. And Tommy Lee Jones is still an old man. And I'm like, I don't remember seeing him in a movie before. I mean, he was in a movie with Cage in 85, but like, it feels like he just kind of became known as an old man. Like, I don't have any recollection. Like, you watch movies with like, you know, Mike the Cleaner. Uh, Mike yeah. Ehrmantraut, Jonathan yeah. Banks from like Breaking Bad or whatever, but like from the 80s and it's like he has like brown hair and it's just like, oh shit, okay. And, like he's just, he was a younger man at one point, but like <laughs> exactly. Tommy Lee Jones and Anthony Hopkins have always been old. And like yeah. even in and they like hit Hannibal, one age he's kind of stopped too. That's what freaks me out the most is like Anthony Hopkins still looks the same old that he does here. Sure. He just like got old and this was 2003, I think, this movie, right? 2005, yeah. But okay, yeah, 2005. 16 years ago. Yeah, or 15 or 14, whatever, when the film The Father, but yeah, crazy. Yeah, insane to me. So that's what I was thinking while I was watching this. Also, because because it came up, I, I texted you about this, but as I was walking through my neighborhood the other night, I saw yes. uh, a, a house yes. that's like a really nice, they're always outdoors, and they have this nice outdoor projector now. And, you know, it's a nice summer night, like around 80, so it's a little warm, not too bad, and they're watching The Father outside, and I'm like, that's such a <laughs> bummer of a fuck, a fucking bummer of a movie to be watching outside, because it's about a man with dementia, basically, right? Like, yeah. losing his grasp on, we talked about that, but, like, yep. it is crazy, mm. it's just like, why, are, why, like, when, you know, I've not watched a ton of movies outside, but <laughs> when I had my going away party that Point you came break. to, we watched Point Break outside, yep. I uh, with Jordan movie. last summer. We watched Sleepaway Camp outside. Perfect. Like, there's a there's a certain kind of mood and atmosphere for an outdoor movie. Don't watch The Father outside. You know, we told you that we like we got the outdoor projector and like we watched stuff in the hot tub and like we were watching Love Island. So it's like reality TV set on an island about dating. Like that's outdoor shit, not yeah. like the father but yeah you when you sent me that text i laughed really hard and showed rachel and she was like oh god what a bummer like because it's also like you know i i like stay, i like trying to figure out what people are watching just because like uh, there's also another thing side note that i was walking by a house and they were watching fox news and i was just like Ugh. but then it cut away and it was john oliver making fun of fox news i was like oh, oh like, i've never heard that twist. kind of reverse where i was like oh wow but like i, I like i like watching like seeing what people are watching just because i'm curious and you know nosy or whatever and i recognize this immediately because it's a brand new movie it looks beautiful like i know what it looks it's how it's shot and it's also with anthony hopkins looking old although now i guess it could have been any anthony hopkins movie between now and 2005 i guess but i was just like no that's the father why are you watching this outside so yeah so many of burt munro's tools and props from his tool shed are kept in a hardware store in new zealand and hopkins used these and some of his clothing for authenticity which is kind of cool the set where they shot this movie i don't think it was the way that it was written, it's unclear. It might have been where he actually, I don't think so. I think it's just where they shot this, was the site of a former gang headquarters. So, cool. That shed? I guess so. I, I guess. I would imagine. That's like the main, like, or were they talking about the motel? Might have been the no, motel. No, I, th I, think, I think his one in New Zealand, in Invercargill. Okay. Invercargill. He says it once in the movie. I'm like, I gotta remember, and I don't remember how he says it. I think it's Invercargill. Yeah, I think he says it. Yeah, I think he says it once. So this is written and directed by a guy named Roger Donaldson, who had wanted to make this movie for like 20 years. He actually had made a short TV documentary called Burt Monroe Offerings to the God of Speed in 1971. So sort of while he was made, while he was setting these records, Roger Donaldson made a movie, like a documentary about him. And then, you know, 34 years later would actually make this movie. Oh, that's cool. So he's cared about this guy for a while. Is he from New Zealand, the guy who made this? Is that why he was, like, so related to, like, so in touch with him? He was born in Australia. Okay, so he's kind, it's kind of, it's from his way. Yes, down under. He shot a movie in 1984 called The Bounty with Anthony Hopkins, and apparently the two of them fought like crazy, so he didn't want to really cast Anthony Hopkins in this, but like, apparently they had a great time making the movie, so cool. He also directed Cocktail, which is a Cruise movie, Seeking Justice, which is a Nicolas Cage movie, The oh. Bank Job, which is a Jason Statham movie, oh. Dante's Peak, and Species. So this guy has made like no real huge movies, but like a bunch of movies that like people have heard of and people have seen. Yeah, exactly. Also, he made one other movie that I'd never heard of before called Smash Palace, where the guy's life is a fiction, where the, the main character's life revolves around motor racing and his backcountry junkyard, the Smash Palace. So another car movie. This guy's you know in in this guy's blood. Yeah. Yeah. The only other trivia that I have is that, like I said in the top, Anthony Hopkins did not employ Monroe's Kiwi accent, but at least one reviewer said he, quote, inhaled the nature of a mid-century Kiwi bloody good bloke, and he inhabits the park to perfection. So I guess, sure, man, whatever that means, I guess he just, like, embodied a Kiwi, even though he didn't have the Kiwi accent, so... 
yeah, that was that was a really interesting part to me, and I do like the movie kind of just like poked itself in that sense that there's like a couple scenes in the movie they're like, "Are you from England?" and he's like, "No, I'm from New Zealand. Come on!" Yeah. Like I don't sound like that, and he's just clearly just sounds like Anthony Hopkins. Like he didn't yep. change his accent or voice at all. So, well, he apparently loved this role because he said it was his view on life was not that different from his own. I guess just like you know, live a life a quarter mile at a time or eight miles at a time or however long this yes. fucking salt race, salt flats race is. And he was so into it while filming it that Burt Monroe's kids visited the set one day, and his performance was so authentic that they started crying. So you know, it's a good sign. I guess if Anthony Hopkins plays your dad, right? It's just like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, if Anthony Hopkins plays, well, I mean, at this rate, he'll probably be able to play my dad, even though he's you know forty years older than him. Yeah, because he'll still be alive. Getting punched out on the Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so what did you think of the world's fastest Indian? I thought this movie was really wholesome. Um, I watched it today with Rachel. We both really enjoyed it. It was sweet. There is at the beginning, I thought at some point there might be a conflict that he can't. Oh, there's conflict all movie long <laughs> that, that gets he can't resolve in 30 <laughs> seconds all movie long. <laughs> Instantly. It starts out, you know, he's just, like, in the garage with the kid, whatever, and he's like, oh, do you want to come to this, like, date with me, lady at the bank? And she's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And it turns out it's, like, a surprise birthday party for him because he's just, like, an awesome, cool dude that everybody loves. Uh -huh. So, like, they're at this birthday party for him, and it's like, oh, we're trying to send him to America because we know that he loves his motorcycle and he wants to go race it, and, like, we all love this guy. And this, like, gang, biker gang pulls up. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, they're trying to, like, seek him out to, like find somebody to, like tune their motorcycles right i thought we were gonna get like a little bit of that like he's like the motorcycle whisperer no they come in hard and no, they're like fuck you old man erase us and he's like okay yeah he's like okay so i'm like it's not really is it cool to challenge an old man to a to a motorcycle race like isn't that like kind of like punching below your weight class a little bit right in the race he's like yeah sure i'll race you yeah and his his bike stalls out he has to get pushed and then he smokes them anyway but there's a turn in it they have to like go around a garbage can and come right. back just like in too fast like against Ponzi, yes. right yes yes and they have it's to come not back, a but he, tag he... team but yeah oh no they do that you're right they do the turn around at the back anyways mm -hmm. and then do another lap yes Apparently, he's, he so impresses them that they give him money when Later. he's trying to go to America. <laughs> yes. So, he like, because there's, like, they're betting on it. They're like, we bet you'll come in last. But he, like, fucking smokes them. And they're like, oh, shit. But yeah. he can't turn, so he just falls. And then they're like, ha old man, and like drive by him. And you're like, okay, cool. But then later in the movie, they come back and they're like, hey, make us proud. Thanks for yeah. being a cool New Zealander. And they give him his money back. I was like, wow, what a fucking guy. This movie also, like he has a heart attack early or he has angina and he goes to the hospital. Yeah. And like your motorcycle attack. days are over. He's like, like the hell they are. And then, you know, he gets his medication and all movie long, you're like, oh, here's where he dies. Yeah. Or like, you yeah. know, in America, he sleeps with Diane Ladd. You're like, oh my God, she died overnight. She died. No. Yeah. Nope. 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 <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that, like, that I was leading myself into a false sense of, like, like sadness, and, like, as it kept unturning it, and then, like, and then I'm like, okay, like, he gets pulled over by a cop, so, like, that one, you're like, he's gonna get out of this, but then he, like, gets to the thing, they're like, they're not gonna let him race, and I was like, oh, that will be kind of sad, and they're like, no, we'll just break the rules, and then, like, we'll, we'll, like, let you get through the thing, because he did, he doesn't know that he needs to register for Okay, uh, before we get there, go ahead, go, keep, he's, go back. he's a 68-year-old man who seemingly doesn't know how anything works. Anything, including money. Yeah, he fly. He, he doesn't <laughs> fly. He takes a boat to Los Angeles. Oh, in every situation he walks into, everybody hates him instantly. Immediately. They're like, who's this old dude? And then go, like, fuck this guy. And then like three seconds later, they're yeah. like, this is our boy. Like, that's the dude right there. Yeah. So he gets on, like, yeah, he gets, he, like, he doesn't have enough money. He finally gets enough money to get on the boat. Well, he sells his house. He mortgages his yes, house. He, yes, like, puts yes. the deed to his house up, which, when he comes back at the end of the movie, his house is gone, so the bank just took his house, but, like, still has his property? Did he have a house, or was he in the shed? I feel like I he know. just was in that shed. Maybe, I think it was, like, the maybe. land. Like, he just, like, lives in this fucking stupid shed. Because when he wakes up with the girl in the beginning... They're, like, in the shed, right? Like, he, like, makes okay. tea in yeah. the shed. I think he with just, like, the, lives uh, in that shack. With like, the metal water. Land. Yeah. I yeah. guess. I don't know. So he has to 
pay for his ticket, but also work on the on the on the ship the ride over. Yeah. And he's a cook. And then he like makes what looks to be like a really nice breakfast. And then one dude like puts ketchup all over. They're like, oh, don't let him see it. But like, that's fine. And then they're all like buddy buddy watching movies. He's like, you guys shouldn't smoke. And they're like, oh, old man, whatever. This guy telling everybody to not smoke is like a recurring theme in the movie. Yeah. It's like a really good anti smoking commercial. It's like, this is a cool old guy, like, just tells you not to smoke. And they're like, well, stop. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he gets to America, and they talk to the customs agent. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to run my fastest Indian. So he had set some land speed records. And the guy's like, what? And then he goes to this, like, his boss. The guy's like, you know, our, your answers concerned us. Yeah, because he, cause he goes to customs, and they're like, how long are you going to be here? He's like, I don't know, however long it takes. Yeah, how long is like something you should and back. Yeah. <laughs> to, until you, there's something you shouldn't say to customs when you're coming to America. Like, how long do you plan to be here for fucking what, as long as I want? Like... <laughs> Right. Not the right answer. He talks to the boss, and the boss is just like, I don't know what you're saying about fast Indians. And the guy's like, I read about you in Popular Mechanics. And he's like, well, I guess you're legit. Have a good day, sir. Yeah, like, yep. Cool. Okay. So then he's like, I need a hotel. And this this taxi driver was probably, like, the, the evilest character in this movie, right? Well, he's the only person who, like, doesn't love him by the end, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because also, just... like, today, like, in every movie, and also in real life, it's just like, I need to go to Hollywood, right? Because he's wherever he is in Long Beach. He's like, I need to go to Hollywood. Like, whether he says this address in Hollywood or that address in Hollywood, you're still taking, like, the 101 or whatever, right? Yeah. So, like, this guy refuses to leave the parking lot until he knows specifically which motel on which street in Hollywood. It's just like, guy, just go. Yeah, just go. Just go and drop this old man off. He was like, pick a good motel. And the guy's like, I'm not a fucking encyclopedia. Like, bro, come on. You're a taxi cab driver in LA. Like, you probably have seen at least one motel. Well, and also, a lot of those, I mean, maybe it's just a Vegas thing, but I think also probably in LA, like, a lot of cabbies have, Bird like, dogging hookups. Fees. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, you need a hotel? I know exactly the place. And then they get a cut of the rent or whatever. The cut of the Yeah, the, like, the, the valet gives you, like, a 20 to be like, thanks for dropping this guy off yeah. here. You know? Like, that's how it works. Exactly. Nope. So he spends $29 on this cab ride. He later buys a car for $250. So I guess he was right to complain about a $29 cab ride, but whatever. Who knows? Well, this is the 60s, too. Remember? It's because the other thing is, is, like, although this is set in the 60s, I couldn't tell that until they started doing the twist and announced to us that this movie was not of this time. Because oh, yeah, like, like, I, I looked it up before, and so I knew from the jump that, but, like, yeah, it just. It's an old guy with an old car with an old motorcycle, like, wearing old man clothes. It could have been any time. Yeah. Like a 1920 motorcycle will look the same today, or did, you know, it's it's not, it's still an old ass motorcycle, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he gets dropped off by the cabbie, and then there's like this huckster flower salesman who like kind of robs him of $10. And then there's like a hooker who immediately hits him up for sex, like immediately. Immediate, same parking, like two steps away. He's get, he's at like a really divey motel. And then he goes inside, and the woman behind the desk actually, we, she like, she lets him know later, honey, I'm a boy. It's, he's just like. Okay, you're still a sweetheart. But, like, there's, like, this <laughs> whole, like, oh, he's an old white dude. Like, he's going to be upset that this woman, this, this yes! dude is, or this woman's actually a dude or whatever. And he's like, yeah. And then there's, like, an angry dude in the diner who's just like, I can't believe that he would. But just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's, there's zero conflict. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. So, like, I thought I was like, okay, like, you know, he's a little deaf. He's a little old. He can't really see. There's going to be conflict that he's meeting this transgendered person mm -hmm. in the 60s. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, whatever you want, dude. I just, I'm just here for this fucking motorcycle. So You're just... still a doll or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's, and, and like, he just is like, cool. Like, that's it. And, and she really likes him and, like, wants to hang out all the time. And he's like, okay, yeah, whatever. Also, he gets laid so much in this movie for being an old man. Yeah. He sleeps with Diane Ladd. He's just like, you know, he's like, hey, where are you sitting? And he's like, I don't know. I'll figure it out. And then, like, he wakes up in a bed and she's <laughs> next to him, not dead. But she's like, yeah, okay. He gets up. He goes to pick up the motorcycle. They put it in, uh, like, oh, sideways. Yeah. The crate is fucked. But, like, totally fine. He unwraps it. He just added some blankets on it. And he's like, oh, there's nothing wrong with this. It's perfect. Just gets, just, it's like, thanks. Glad my motorcycle's. Like, I really thought, like, he was going to have a fucked up motorcycle. No. Nope. Just, just totally fine. So then he's like, okay, need to go buy a car. They even say, not a scratch on it. He's like, yeah, because it was packed so well. Cool. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So then, so then he's like, well, now I need a fucking car. So like, 
the receptionist from the hotel she's like i'll take you and he's like cool just drops him off he's like yeah i need a car and like he's like this one sounds like shit i'll buy it and he's like okay he like talks him like a hundred dollars down so like 250 bucks and he's like here hold on a second pull over and he's like there you go he has a wrench in his pocket fixes it is like now it works and <laughs> gets back in the car <laughs> And then he's like, oh, but what is he? Oh, he needs his shop, right? So he's like, I'm going to pay $250, which is $100 less than you're asking, and give me your shop all night. And the guy's like, you drive a hard bargain, but I'll take it, old man. <laughs> like, the car is like 350 or something. Anthony Hopkins yeah. goes like, I'll give you 220 The guy's like, how about 250 He's like, that's not in the middle of a chore or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he says yes, and then the shop. So just like, okay, sure, whatever. I mean, he's a Kiwi driver, so he's driving on the wrong side of the road. He, like, doesn't look before he goes. He never gets in a car accident. People just swerve out of the way. Yep. He's yep. scaring everybody, but everything's fine. He goes to the shop, and he's like, damn, now if I could just find some tires. And the guy's like, can you fix another car, and I'll give you the tires for free? He's like, yep, two seconds, boop, boop, just does that. Yep. And he's like, do you want to work here, bud? Like, because, like, the guy was, like, kind of grumpy with him at the beginning, but now we're getting to the end of their time together. So he's obviously in love with Anthony Hopkins. Yep. <laughs> and he's like, nope, got to go. Get the fuck out. And so he just starts driving off. And then he goes on, like, his, his like, wacky road trip adventures. Oh, yeah. every <laughs> There's so much. Like, this crazy thing is going to derail him. And it doesn't. Like, so then he's driving the car. He has it, like, on this hitch, right? Like, he has, like, two bicycle tires that, like, carry the motorcycle towed to the back of his car. Mm -hmm. And, like, one just wobbles, falls off the fucking thing, just hits, it just rolls. Right. It's just gone. <laughs> so he, like, he, like, stops a Native American guy. He's like, hey, you're an Indian. That's an Indian. And the guy's like, cool. And he's like, help me pick this up. And he's like, yeah. He's like, your tire's pretty fucked. So he's like, yep. And then the next scene, he's he put a log in the back of the thing to replace a tire. And it's just like, it's just like dredging through the, the yep. I don't know if that's the word, like plowing, like a plow. Just like. He's, he's, gr he's basically slowly grinding a wood stump behind a car <laughs> as he drags it down the highway for like leverage or whatever yeah yeah for like miles he like yeah. he like goes hangs out with the with his native american guy like uh, at his house and he's like hey you know what you should probably stop smoking <laughs> yeah. of, of course and then he's like we can't fix your tire he's like yeah fuck it i'll just drive with the log for a while <laughs> so he keeps driving with the log he meets a guy from the vietnam war who like of course like in a movie like this there's just like oh yeah we're gonna be done in six months it's like no you're not like it just it's one of those things where it's like also you know, this guy this guy da vinci he's gonna be a real good painter it's like okay yeah we, <laughs> we know that and he's like what are you doing he's like spraying agent orange everywhere and i'm like anthony hopkins now's your time to tell him you probably shouldn't be breathing that in you're missing an anti-smoking opportunity right, right here that would have been a great time to say it. But yes, like he, he, he eventually finally does get to the Salt Flats in Utah, and he didn't register, so he can't race. And then eventually, just because he's a nice dude to people, they're like, they convince him to- <laughs> He's not a convince... nice dude, though. He comes up to, like, the registration desk, and he's like, fuck you guys, I'm racing. Like, he doesn't, he, like, I mean, like, he doesn't say that. Well, he doesn't say, no, he's just like, I'm here to race. So, like, you didn't register. He's like, nobody told me. But, like, he's <laughs> nice to the other people. And so the other guy's just like, can you just at least, like, do the tech inspection so in the chance that he can race? So, like, yeah, sure, whatever. And it fails every single Miserably. tech inspection. <laughs> Everything, like, this is bad, this is bad, this needs like, to be replaced, can't this let is him bad. Race. Yeah. And then he's just like- Basically, fuck it, I'm just going to do it anyway. And so, like, he just does, like, a trial run, and they're like, damn, that sure was fast. We're going to let you race. They, he tries to just do it. So he convinces other guys that he's just going to just go, like, when they're not looking, essentially. And so they try to do that. They're like, bud, you got to relax. Like, okay, what we'll let you do is, I don't know how this makes any sense, but every other official here is going to get in their car and we're going to ride behind you while you try to do it. And if you, like, don't die as an old man, then we might let you race. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. That's exactly what I want to do anyways. So and they're like, okay. that's exactly what happens. <laughs> so, so they start doing that and they're like, oh, cool. We're doing like 100. He'll survive. That's cool. And then he just lays on it and just takes off. Yep. And he's like, oh, yeah, I couldn't get out of second gear, and I had a problem with this or whatever, so, like, I just had to go, and they're like, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and then he goes back to, like, this, you know, they're, they're eating dinner. He's just like, yeah, there's a problem with the bike, but I know how to fix it. I'm going to melt the lead brick and put it in the this front. It's going to change the center of gravity, and it just works first try. And then he goes and, like, he speeds through Nevada. And then, he, yeah, he speeds, go ahead, he speeds through Nevada, and then he realizes, he's like, 
oh yeah, that's not gonna work. He was like, that was a fucking stupid idea. What? Who? Like, why did I do that? And they're like, I don't know. You thought of it. He was like, yeah, fuck the lead idea, and just doesn't do it anyways. But he's basically in the body gets pulled over, and the guy's just like, we don't have any speed limit here, but just go see if we don't want to hurt anybody. He's like, yes, sir, officer, and like that's, that's oh, the end that's of the That's the thing. He's like, where is this? Is this car registered? And he goes, yeah, New Zealand. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. for the road? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, but not in America. And he's like, no, in New Zealand. And he's like, okay, bud, just be safe. And just you like, sound what's... like you're from England. No. <laughs> it's from... And then he gets back in the morning of like the trial. They're like, hey, guess what, Bert? Uh, we nominated you Sportsman of the Year. <laughs> yes. And we yes. know that you don't want a trophy. So here's money. It's just like, what? <laughs> so they just give him like a bag of like thousands of dollars, presumably, because he pulls out like a couple hundred. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, sick. <laughs> Again failing up like this guy's killing it and then he crushes it in the race goes over 201 miles an hour and then he crashes and skids and is in pain and like his leg is all fucked up but he's just yeah. laughing and, and he calls his neighbor in new zealand like the kid his only friend calls him collect and just like he's just like hey i did it and then goes home and he's just like yeah i'm gonna go back next year that's and everybody movie. and everybody parties like he comes back yeah. and like even the kid who's next door his neighbor his grumpy dad seems to be pretty excited He's like, I'm going back next year. And he's like, oh, god damn it. You're going to wake me up in the morning with this fucking motorcycle. Because that was like one of the first things that happened in the movie. Yeah. But like nobody's really mad about it. They're just like, okay, whatever. He had a parade essentially at the end of the race mm -hmm. in the salt flats. Like before the race in the salt flats, he gets like a giant welcome home party. And he's like, fuck it. I'm going back next year. Then we see like the end card. And it's like, he did for like nine years. He just kept going back. He just he kept setting records. Yeah. <laughs> just kept racing i don't doubt that everything in this movie to a certain extent happened yeah and i also think it's taking creative liberty that like this all probably wasn't on one trip yes if and so my, trips, my, exactly yes my issue with the movie is not the movie itself but it's the kind of movie and it's the fact that like biopics which this ostensibly is don't really work for me because generally and it's not this exactly but they, they cover so much ground that, like, they can't go deep on anything. And here, it's more specific. Like, like a movie like Selma is kind of a biopic about Martin Luther King, but about the one event in his march on Selma, yes. right? Yes. And that yes. works well because it's such a contained time. Here, it's kind of like it's just this one trip to America, which should work. But it also feels like there's no way all of this crazy shit happens in one trip. And if it did... That's amazing. But, like, I don't get the impression that it all did, you know? No, it definitely didn't. I, I, I don't think so. Like, he just had, like, one trip where every possible thing went wrong, and then it right. totally fixed itself in three yep. seconds every single time. Absolutely wild. I mean, but again, for a movie that I hadn't heard of, it's got a decent number of people who have seen it on Letterboxd. We'll get to that game in a second. The trailer on YouTube, I think, has, like, over a million views. Like, it's, like, a movie really? that seems pretty big, I think. I want to say. Hold on. Yeah, it has 1.1 million views, That the trailer that we're going to watch. I don't know what... I, Diane Ladd, who's a big actress, is the woman he sleeps with. Walton Goggins, who I love yes, from yes. Justify, but also from Righteous Gems and stuff. He's yep. in this. Uh, there's a dude from The Boys in this. Bruce Greenwood, who's in, like, in everything, is in this. And then the guy who plays Tina at the front desk is in Silicon Valley and Curb Your Enthusiasm. So, like, it's got like, serious actors. Like, I think if they had just stayed in New Zealand, it would have been like, oh, we got the one American Hollywood actor, and then, like, we have our local things or whatever. But, like, he's in New Zealand for, like, ten minutes. And then it's the rest of it's in L.A. and Utah, right? So yep. they just, like, have American talent or whatever, right? So it's just easier to get, like, names that we recognize and people that we recognize or whatever. But it's so weird. It's just so weird. It's 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 so it's so weird, but it's so wholesome. It's This is a movie, like, I say, like, a lot of times, like, this is a movie, like, I'd watch with my dad. This is a movie you'd watch with, like, your grandparents. No, my dad would love this, I think. And he would, yes, like, every, every time Anthony Hopkins, like, made a joke, my dad would be like, yeah. Like, he just, like, like he's, he would love it. And I'm just, well... No, I don't like it's just corny. Like it's not bad and it's 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 wholesome and like I didn't I didn't really not enjoy watching it, but it's just like Anthony Hunt, like it just it feels like somehow like the perfect guy for the role and also like yes. the absolute worst idea for this guy ever. Like it just it's the weirdest We were just know. talking about it with Nico Kevo and Spy Racers that like you're like, oh, like would Vin Diesel do this? And like people like picking a role that like kind of murders their career. And, like, this feels like that, but it also feels like Anthony Hopkins gave so little fucks that he was just like, yeah, it's a cool old motorcycle, dude. Like, I'm yeah. going to fucking do that. Like, yeah. you guys can suck my dick if you don't like this movie, because that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, I read the whole wiki page and all the IMDb trivia, and, like, I, I didn't get an impression of why he did this. It's not like, you know, he said that he liked doing it, like I said before, because he his life mentality, but just it feels like, oh, it's just a project I'll do. 
too. Sure. Like it wasn't like I grew up idolizing this guy. It was a yeah, dream come yeah, true or yeah. whatever. Just like, nah. Wanted to do the movie. It <laughs> just, it just did it. Yeah, okay. Ex- exactly. And it, it doesn't feel like everybody in this movie got paid. Like this wasn't like a big budget no. movie, right? No. So it's not like they were all like, oh, I'm just gonna cash this check. I know that that's what I'm doing. Like nobody judge me. I'm getting paid. It was just like. No, they just was like, they're going to do this movie. Any other notes, any other thoughts about the world's fastest Indian? That's No, I got, I got them all in as we talked. Cool. Let's watch the trailer then. The world's fastest Indian HD trailer published by Magnolia Pictures and Magnet releasing about 10 years ago. 1.18 million views. Top comment on YouTube. Possibly my favorite movie of all time. What? Second one, one of the most underrated movies in history. So, wow. Let me know when you're ready to go. I'm ready whenever you are. Three, two, one, play. All my life, I wanted to do something big. Over here. Oh, it's, just, it's, it's so, like, he's always wearing that shirt that says Indian. It's just like, this is, it's... It's a badass shirt, though. I kind of want one. It's, like, really fucking cool. Yeah, just old, pure speed. Now, what exactly do you intend to do here in the United States? Oh, here's him at the customs office. On the beach. Oh, yeah, his neighbor's, like, cut your lawn. He just burns it up. That, that's my Welcome wet dream. I hate grass so much. What is this? It's cork from a brandy he also pees. Like, like everywhere he goes, he's like, where's the bathroom? Where do I pee? Because he's got, like, a prostate thing, and, like, he always pees yes. on his lemon tree. But, like, his first question everywhere is just like, where do I pee? Like, the guy's just like, yeah, over there. Did you kill cool, yourself okay. You crash? Oh, they just show wow. it falling twice. Both of them. Now, fast, you're going back there? There we go. Yeah, but, uh... 150, 160 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> What's crazy is there's really, there's like three different racing scenes in this movie, right? There's the biker race, there's him in Utah, yep. and there's the race at the end, and this is showing like two minutes of all of that. Yeah. So like, you've basically seen like 40% of the action in this movie if you just watch this trailer. It kind of makes it feel kind of like in a way too the trailer with this music it makes it feel like it's like bumbly you know in a way do you get what i'm saying yeah i think that's kind of in a way what they're going for which i don't know why but like ever since i was a lad i've been interested in things that go fast there was that one time where like i think he's like having a heart attack or like you know he's having chest pains or whatever and one of the women just like are you okay and he like just does a weird jig and it's just like no, but like, 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 and she like doesn't follow up on it. She's like, no, but like, really, like, are you dying? And he just like does like this little song and dance. It's like, okay, uh, sure. I like that he gave he so he has nitroglycerin pills, and the guy's like, he's like, oh, give me one to like preload before I do this race, and he like is like, okay, and he takes two, and he's like, you're only supposed to take one. And he's like, yeah, one for me and one for my girl, and then throws one in the gas tank. I was like, yo, wild. <laughs> All right, the letterbox game. So for reference sake, Mad Max Fury Road has been seen by 872,000 people. The world's fastest Indian from 2005, directed by Roger Donaldson, starring Anthony Hopkins, Ian Ray, Tessa Mitchell, and Aaron Murphy, has been seen by how many people? I got to go low, just because like, we've never even heard of it, uh-huh. even though it has Anthony Hopkins and everybody in it. I'm going to go like 20,000. Oh, that's low? You're still way too high. Oh, really? Yeah. I was, I'm, I was like, trying to, I like... I thought you were going to say, like, 2,000. No, I was trying to ride Anthony Hopkins, though. And, like, the cast is so great. And, like, motorcycle people, because it says, like, the world's fastest Indian. It's not, like, motorcycle fun time. You know what I mean? Like, it, like, has, like, the name of Indian motorcycles in it. Um, yeah, it's okay, not super cross. 6,000? You're close, but you're too low now. Okay, 7,500. 8,204. 8,204 people have watched this. Average rating of 3.5. Pretty Most high. Most common a 4, then a 3.5, then a 3. Aaron Newworth, who, spoilers, will be on next week's Tokyo Drift episode from Out Now with Aaron and Abe. He gave this movie four stars, so he really liked The World's Fastest Indian. Yeah, that's cool. Out of those 8,200 people, though, Joe, how many have it in their top four? Oh. Two. Too low. Really? Four. Mm-hmm. Too low. Seven, and I'm calling it. Too low. Really? Twelve. Twelve. Fifteen people have it in their top four. It, they, they really got the wholesome down. One person, I will say, 
Victoria Benitez at Victoria Benitez. Favorite film, World's Fastest Indian. Okay. Second favorite film, Fast and Furious 6. Third favorite film, F9. Fourth favorite film, The Turbocharged Prelude. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with Victoria Benitez. But, Can we beady uh, wap her? Seriously? She has, uh, her website is VegasSkills.com. It's just an app. I don't know, man. She seems like somebody that should be listening. I think it's a robot. Uh, she writes, I'm a copier. I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. Um, there are two different accounts. Pick one. Well, mm -mm -mm. so the one with the review has slightly harder movies to get. I think you'll easily be able to get at least two of them. The one without a review, because only one of the 15 people in the top four wrote a review. With the person yeah. without a review, I think you can easily get all three of the other ones. So do you want to do the one with the review or the one without the review? Um, dealer's choice, Easier man. or harder? Doesn't matter to me. I'm in a good mood. We can do harder if you want. We can do easier if you want. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's do easier. We're gonna do Blue Me at Blue Me. No review. World's Fastest Indian is his number two. I mean, I don't know. His profile picture is Tiger King, so I don't know if Blue Me's a man or a wo woman or just, is you know. Is it B-L-E-W-M-E or B-L-O-O-M? I-E. B-L, like, Bloom. Okay, Blue I -E. Me. World's Fastest Indian is Blue Me's number two movie. The other three are all huge movies. Okay. Um, one of which we covered for this podcast, one of which Mike and I covered for another podcast, and one of which Mike and I would not have covered for another podcast that we killed, but it was, it's he's related to that for a reason. But there are three huge movies, I'm gonna say, all from before 2000. Oh, before 2000. I was going to say Transformers. Mm -hmm. This was going to be one of my guesses. No, and these all are, to a certain extent, no, that's, that's not exactly... I was say they're all family films, but they're not. Mission Impossible is one of them? No. And the number one movie, which is one that me and Mike did talk about, is in three other people's, and it's a movie I hate. Forrest Gump. You got it. There you go. That's a wholesome-ass movie, too. Okay. Right? I see where we're, we're going. Okay. But three or four of the top 15, of the 15 people love If you like this, Wolf you Resident like Forrest Gump. Yep. yep exactly. Yeah. It's which just is like, why I like no. this, yeah. One that we did for this podcast, which is probably the most popular movie we've ever talked about in the show. Mad Max Fury Road. No, probably more popular than that. Inception? No, not in terms of letterbox numbers, just in terms of overall. Although it has, its, its member count is 1,000 lower than Mad Max. It's, it's 871 as opposed to 872. Like, it's right there. One of the most popular movies we ever did here. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming From it's not before a 2000. It's not a Fast and Furious movie. Nope, that's all after 2000. Yeah. There are other more obvious clues I could give you, but I'm just, I'm trying to give you, yeah. but again, I don't, I think it's one that you don't remember that we did. Probably is the problem. It's, we've had it in, in the top fours before. I don't remember that we did it though. Popular before. It's the first of a trilogy. Oh, I feel like I get stuck in this hole all the time because I always think it's Star Wars, but it's definitely not Star Wars. We did not cover that for the show. No. First of a, tr fuck. I know that clue and I know that I always get this one wrong or like i can't get there and blade runner is not a trilogy blade runner was in the one that we didn't do blade runner was the number one movie in the harder top four okay the most popular movie probably beloved iconic to use ryan's word classic movie classic car movie bullet not that old no huge bullet's not a big movie classic car movie i'm still gonna i'm, I'm still holding true to that american graffiti no. Bigger than that. Way bigger than that. Not Transformers. Not because that's too new. We also haven't done that. We did yeah. Bumblebee, I guess, but. Yeah. And you're saying you're you're holding it to that, but does that mean like it's kind of not a car movie? No, I mean, I mean, it's not about the car, but the car is like, the car is on the poster. Yes. Oh, yeah. Fuck. What is it? And it's the same one as part of a trilogy. Uh-huh. God damn it. What is it? I can't think of it, and I know I got it wrong before, and that's what's uh -huh. frustrating me the most. What the fuck? There's a car in the poster, but it's not about a car. One of the most... Not uh, they gone recast to... the main actor's girlfriend for the second movie. Oh. And it's a trilogy. God damn it. Mm -hmm. Not gone in 60 seconds. Nope, not that's that. also 2000. That's too new. Yeah. Bigger. I would guess how many tens of thousands of people? Batman? 19,000 people have in their top... No, no, we haven't done Batman. No. 19,000 people have had this in their top four. I don't know. I, I'm still... Like, once the trilogy thing comes up, I always forget what the trilogy is, and then I get stuck in things that I know are trilogies, and I can't un-get out of the trilogies. Three of my Letterboxd friends have this movie in their top four, including the, the biggest hint, 
What? Mrs. West. Oh, Back to the Future. Yeah. I always forget Back to the Future is a trilogy. Yeah. Always. Every fucking time. And you're you right. You also it forgot that we did it. Car that it's movie. huge. And they recast yep. his girlfriend. That it's a car movie, yep. but not really a car yep. movie. Yep. 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 Number three. Movie number three. I'm just going to say Apples. Oh, Goodwill Hunting. There you go. Forrest Bingo. Gump, World's Fastest Indian, Goodwill Hunting, and Back to the Future. Those kind of track for this vibe, right? Yeah, like they're that's... all kind of family, but also not kind of family. And they're also kind of all like. Feel good. Yeah. Gentle Even conflict. though Goodwill Hunting is like a very depressing movie, you know? So, but also oh, yeah, he gets yeah. through it. Thank you, Bloomy. Shout out, Bloomy. Bloomy watched Hocus Pocus on Halloween and Love Actually on Christmas. So, Bloomy is that kind of uh, Bloomy. So. Yes. Shout out, Bloomy. And shout out, Haley, for picking The World's Fastest Indian. For us to talk about. Yes, and it's a it's a movie that I'm going to watch with like either young children or very old people, which kind of have the same movie palette, I think. Just not with me. <laughs> well, you're neither of those things, so no. True, true, true. Next week, I teased that we are doing Tokyo Drift with Aaron Newworth of Out Now with Aaron and Abe. If you have not listened to their podcast, we were on about a month ago or two months ago, I guess, when F9 came out. Yep. But they do a weekly new release movie podcast. That comes out on Sundays or Mondays. We were, I think they record on Sundays and just put it out either that night or the next day about that weekend's movie. So check out Out Now with Aaron and Abe. If you think we've been doing this for a while, they've been doing it for what, like, like 10 eight years. or 10 years or something? It's yeah. crazy. It's something like 10 years. They have like thousands of episodes, right? Yeah. They're like on like thousands something. It's insane. And then also next week, we're going to have a bonus episode on the Patreon at ChiefAskChiefRever.com. We'll announce that on the Tokyo Drift episode. Our next two pit stops, which I'm not going to say what they are, are also both, actually our next three Two and a half, because the third one is a Brian Rodriguez just, like, forced a patron pick, even though he doesn't <laughs> actually have a patron pick. But the yeah. next two are, for sure, explicitly patron picks, and then one after that is a kind of sort of Brian patron pick. So cool. a lot of patron, like, I'm like, ooh, run out of lap here. we got, we got to fill some movies in. So here we go, the patron picks coming up soon. But thank you to Haley once again for yeah, doing thank this. Thank you, Haley. If you want to pick a movie for us to watch, go to TooFast2Forever.com, kick in at the $10 a month level or above, and you get one a year, one pick a year. So... Make it count. Make a good thing. You could watch, like, again, I've, I've said it before, Alex Ellen is having us watch a terrible, terrible movie because it is a terrible movie, and he wants us to suffer. So you can do that, too. You know, that's yeah, just the thing you, you can like. do if you want to do it. For all things Too Fast, Too Forever, you go to cageclub.me, facebook.com, slash Too Fast, Too Forever, or at Too Fast, Too Forever on Twitter and Instagram. Email us, family, at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at Too Fast, Too Forever.com and our store, Too Fast, Too Forever.shop. Come back next week for Tokyo Drift which will be interesting to see now that we know that Han is back. So, Oh, that's right. It's going to be our first watch since Han is like officially dead and undead and then dead and undead again. It's going to be the one where we know where's L. Where L at, String? Because also Han will be working for Mr. Nobody during this time. That's right. Yes, yes. It's going to be a weird movie to watch, but that's coming next week right here. So on there's going to be like parts where like Han's like, oh, yeah, I think there's a part where Sean's like, where were you at, Han? He's like, oh. And like, it'd be like, oh, fuck, he was Mr. Uh, Nobody. Yeah. I, I gotta go babysit. What? <laughs> I mean, I gotta go uh, hang out with a Yakuza. We oh, gotta, okay, cool. That's what I thought you said. We gotta look in one of those, like, you know, his, like, sleep pods. We gotta see if there's, like, a small child in one of them. Because if that's, like, 2013-ish, yeah, L, she would be, like, 12. Yeah, so just, like, look for, like, a preteen, a tween somewhere in Tokyo Drift, and that's L. So, yep, yeah. exactly. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe, too. And we'll tell you all about it when we see you.